All right, morning, or evening, grace, brethren, and so it's great to have all of you back on with us here as we go over our weekly Bible memory verse. And I hope everyone has had a good early beginning to this week and is looking to the Lord uh, this week and uh, for the rest of this year and for the rest of your life, as that's uh, what we'll be looking at here in our verse. Uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and open up in a uh, brief word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the immense of sin, for the opportunity to come back and meet over the cyber waves here, and I pray that you'd bless your people. Be with us, we pray. Give us all that which we need, Father, and uh, be with uh, this a uh, few minutes that we have here, Lord God, and may you just help us and encourage us in our hearts and lives, Lord, to seek after you and seek after your will and after your ways, and just bless your people with peace, Lord. Give us a good day, a good day, and be in a good week, we pray. For it's in Christ's blessing, and we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. And our verse this week's come to us comes to us from Jeremiah, chapter number 17. And verse number 16, it says, As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day thou knowest. That which came out of my lips was right before thee. And so here we have this verse here from Jeremiah 17, 16. And what's the main meaning of this verse in our own words? It's that Jeremiah, you see, he never wavered from doing what the Lord wanted him to do. He said, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, because that's what the Lord led him to do, and we must do what God leads us to, not what we want to do, not what's in our own feelings, not what our parents want us to do, not what relatives think we should do, but from what the Lord wants us to do. And Jeremiah never wavered from doing what the Lord wanted him to do. And it says there the latter part, that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Everything he did and said was right with God. See, his actions and his speech was correct. It was according to the will of God. That is a truly spiritual person that is walking in the Spirit, and that's definitely what we need more of in this day and time. We need people that will walk in the Spirit of God. And some other verses that help us understand this verse, Jeremiah 1-7. This is really the, uh, the only verse that goes along with this, also in the book of Jeremiah. And if you are uh, familiar with the Bible, you know the, uh, the context of this here. And we will take a look at that. This is going to kind of set our, uh, this is really a foundational verse to the verse that we have this week. Jeremiah 1, 7, this is when God called Jeremiah to be a prophet. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. Because Jeremiah was a young man. He was probably around 18 years old when God called him to be a prophet. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And see there, that was Jeremiah's calling. That's when the Lord called him. And whenever the Lord put all these things in him, he said, you're going you're gonna to be a prophet. And you're going to go to everybody that I send you to do. You're going to go to the ministry that I tell you to do. And whatever I command you to say, that you're going to say. And that's what Jeremiah says here. He said, Lord, I didn't hasten from being a pastor that you called me to be. And I never, uh, and I never said anything that wasn't, that wasn't right, that wasn't in your will. And so what are some things that this verse teaches me about God? That God wants us to follow him and have actions and speech that please him. Sounds, you know, uh, fair, probably fairly elementary, but that's really good, though. You know, and it, it's really actually deep. Like I say, it's elementary just from, from my observation. I don't, uh, I, I don't see very, very many people even in fundamental churches that are really fulfilling this in their lives like they should. God wants all of us to follow him. You know, and then our actions and our speech, you know, will please him. See, that's a good exposition there. You know, we have a lot of people that have never really began to follow God, might be saved, but, you know, they never really took those first couple of steps. You know, they never really got past that first step of salvation to really follow God. Then after we follow him and then, you know, our actions, what we do, you know, what we say, you know, they're going to please God. Because obviously, in order for... Uh, uh, for somebody to get to that point, we'll look at that just a little bit there, a little bit more, and expound on that a little bit. But first, what are some sins that this verse reproves? Not following the Lord for the things that we just said. Not following the Lord, having the wrong act, having the wrong actions, and the wrong message. You know, people have actions that don't line up with God, and their own speech, and you know, in their own speech that doesn't line up with God. And what are some things this verse teaches me about myself in my daily life? And this is really the meat behind that. That we should seek the Lord's will every day. See, it's good that people get saved, but after that, 
you know, what do they need to do? Say and do the things that are pleasing to the Lord. In our daily life, we should seek the Lord's will every day, and every day we should say and do things that are pleasing to the Lord. And, you know, the meat behind that, studying the Bible and praying. See, that's why so many people never fulfill the will of God for their lives. You cannot fulfill the will of God for your life without having fellowship with God. You know, that's a relationship. You know, that's just like, you know, the relationship between a married couple, between a man and a woman. You know, they have to communicate with each other. You know, they have to communicate with each other, you know, to be on the same wavelength, you know, in their daily activities and their lives. You know, the direction the family's going with raising the kids, etc. Saying God wants us to follow him and have actions and speech that please him. You know, when it's a sin, whenever we don't follow him, when we have the wrong actions and the wrong message, and that's because people just are not seeking the will of God consistently at all. So many people, and that's why we have the mess that we have in this world in this day and time. We're not seeking the Lord's will every day. We don't say and do things that please the Lord, you know, because we don't know God's word. We're not in God's word. We're not in prayer. We're not speaking to the Lord. That's why we're deluded of God's power, and we're not fulfilling the will of God for our life. You know, kind of like a kind of like a particular thing, like we said there. You know, with marriage, you know, that's why our divorce rate is so high. You know, even in fundamental Baptist churches, you know, we have people, you know, who are not even seeking the will of God. You know, for the right spouse, you know, that marrying outside of God's will. And what are some other lessons from this verse? That we should not desire wrath on other people. See, like a Jeremiah says in the middle part of that verse, he said, Neither have I desired the woeful day. See, he's talking about, you know, whenever judgment comes to Judah, whenever they go into Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah, you know, did not, uh, you know, did not desire that for his people. He wanted his people to repent and get right with God. But, you know, we know the history, we know the captivity did come. But that's not what Jeremiah you know, desired. We should not desire wrath on other people. Now, obviously, you know, we have to preach hard. You know, I've kind of done that a little bit here this morning. You know, we need it to, we have to tell people like it is. You know, we have dead churches. You know, we have people that are not fulfilling the will of God for their lives. You know, plain and simple, you know, you know, that, that's, you know, a big reason why I started this ministry. You know, like why I, you know, why I started, you know, why I started Word Awakening, you know, all the preaching and teaching that we do, you know, why I did this year weekly Bible memory verse. You know, so that people will meditate on the Word of God. So at least that would be a step in the right direction of fulfilling the Lord's will. But, you know, we don't desire wrath on other people. You know, that is like Jeremiah. You know, that, that's why we do this. You know, I want another revival, another great awakening. I want people, you know, to find the will of God for their life. I want them to be clean. I want them to be pure. You know, we don't desire wrath on other people because, you know, I'm not the one that's doing the wrath. You know, that, that's up to God. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. But, you know, that is going to come. The Bible says everybody reaps what they sow. You know, that, that was true even in the Old Testament, you know, with God's chosen people, you know, like with Jeremiah, you know, to Judah, the southern kingdom. But we don't desire wrath on other people. We want them to repent and get right. You know, we, we should not wish ill on anybody, you know, especially, you know, not our brethren and sisters in the faith. You know, like, 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 I know that that's another issue, like with ministries, you know, we got a lot of like preachers, you know, jealous of other preachers and all, you know, that's not the Lord's will. You know, that certainly isn't right. You know, I'm not jealous of anybody. You know, I want the best, you know, I want the best for everybody. You know, especially other preachers who are preaching the truth, you know, I want the best for them. And uh, the last thing that we get here from this verse, that God knows our hearts and our intentions. Like Jeremiah says, you know, thou knowest, you know, the Lord knows our hearts. And the Lord knows our intentions. Because like a lot of people use that as a, you know, kind of think use that as, a, as an excuse, you know, for how they live. Well, God knows my heart. I don't do this, this, or this. God knows my heart. Yeah, God does know your heart. And yes, your actions do, your actions, you know, do show your heart. But, you know, God knows our heart. God knows our intentions. You know, God knows why we do things. You know, like even in our ministries, you know, do we do things for, you know, a big round of applause, you know, to get, you know, to get the praise of men? You know, like some people, you know, they, they won't do anything in the ministry. You know, like even preachers, you know, they, they won't go somewhere and preach a meeting. You know, unless you give them a big parade and a big round of applause, you know, and give them a big thousand dollar love offering and everything. You know, God knows our hearts. You know, and God knows our intentions. And so, yes, you know, the Lord knows. 
our hearts and our intentions. And so let's do that which is right in the eyes of God. So a lot of things we can get there, you know, from that verse. It really is kind of, you know, it really is amazing, you know, just from one verse, you know, how you can glean, you know, so much, you know, with the Christian life, you know, just out of one verse in the Bible. But it's good, though. You know, we need to follow the will of God and do those things that are pleasing in God's sights and have a pure heart. And, you know, that is, you know, that's where it all starts. You know, all starts in the heart. You know, do we have a heart for God? You know, yes, our actions do show that. You know, starting there, you know, are we delighting ourselves in the Lord? Do we have the right heart? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. So thank you so much there for being with us here this morning. And a good weekly Bible memory verse. Tell, like I said, you know, convicting, you know, convicting as well, you know, to me in my daily life. You know, am I seeking the will of God every day of my life? Hmm, not necessarily always. It's something I definitely want to get better at this year. You know, I look back at 2020 and I grew a lot spiritually. Tough year, I know, kind of externally. But, you know, I grew a lot spiritually. You know, I started this ministry here in 2020. You know, really got in the Word of God even more. You know, got in the Word of God even more. Was even giving God more of my time. And so let's so walk with God and do what the Lord would have us to do. Amen. In this upcoming year, each and every day. You know, begin every day with prayer. You know, end every day with prayer. You know, pray much. You know, pray without ceasing. Have our heart and mind on God and be in the Word of God many, many hours throughout the week. And so thank you so much, folks, for being with us. And hopefully that was helping a blessing to you. And we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the enough of sin. Thank you for this time together, Lord God, for your word. And oh, yes, Lord, it is convicting. And I pray that we would seek after your will each and every day, you know, that we would stay close to you, you know, that way we can fulfill, you know, the will of God, you know, for our lives, you know, just like personally on my prayer list, you know, that we would have, you know, you know, the exact house that we're supposed to have and start the exact church, you know, in the exact community on the exact street that we should. Uh, this coming year as we move to move to upstate New York and begin our ministry and that you just be with us and use us for your honor and for your glory and just give us all that which we need father and just bless your people with peace you know bless each one you know we don't desire you know your wrath on anybody you know we want people to repent we want people to get right with you we want people to really really get fired up for you now you know not not you know not just a show but you know the right thing you know to have the right spirit of God and just be with each and every one of us, Lord, and use us for our glory. And we do thank you for your mercy, Lord God, and for your compassion. We know you have much of that, and we're so thankful for it, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that uh, we would just get a hold of it, but, uh, you know, we wouldn't go the wrong that wrong direction. Now, you know, you've had mercy, and you've had compassion. You know, you had that, you know, you had all that compassion, you know, on the northern kingdom and on the southern kingdom, you know, there in the Old Testament. But, you know, that they never reformed the way that they were supposed to. But I pray, Lord, that we would. You know, that we would give ourselves to true religion and give ourselves to prayer, to fasting, to the word of God, and that we would fulfill your will, you know, that we would start the ministry that we ought to have. You know, I'm not necessarily starting for a lot of men, asking for a lot of ministries, but, you know, for what you want us to have, Lord God. You know, we know church planning is a part of that. You know, we know that, you know, doing Bible translation work into other languages and things, you know, is, uh, uh, you know, you know, is a part of that. You know, and, uh, you know, helping people, you know, that have alcohol and, you know, tobacco, drug addictions is a part of that. But whatever you'd have your people do, I pray, Lord, that we would do it, that we would just forsake everything, you know, forsake everything this world has to offer for the cause of revival, you know, to be that man of God and woman of God that we should be to fulfill your will, Lord. Just help us in our homes, you know, that's really where it starts, you know, in the homes, you know, having the right husband-wife relationship, you know, the right relationship with our children, raising them for the glory of God, you know, and that spreads to the house of God, you know, when the power of God comes down, you know, how we need that in this day and how we need powerful churches, you know, we need people that are really conformed to you, Lord God, and to your ways, you know, people that aren't consumed with this world, people that aren't addicted to the things of this world, you know, that aren't addicted to entertainment and, you know, sports and everything, but people that, uh, you know, just love you, that are consumed with you, that are addicted to the ministry. You know, like it's said about that family there in the New Testament, you know, may that be said of us, that we're addicted to the ministry and that we just want to do your will and your way, Lord God, just be with us throughout this day and throughout this week. May it be good, may it be godly, may it be holy, for it's in Christ's blessing, and we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. Thank you, folks, for being with us. And uh, we'll see as we do our, uh, as we, the next thing we're going to do is uh, teach our uh, Bible Institute class here. I'll get uh, finishing up the book of 1 Samuel. So, till then, till the day breaks and the shadows flee away. I am Brother Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.